right. Welcome everybody, bienvenue tout le monde à cette présentation uh, pour prendre responsabilité et pour l'autoresponsabilisation des personnes handicapées et entrepreneurs. Hello, welcome everybody to this presentation, Taking Control of Economic Independence for Women with Disabilities. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. My name is René Jean-Dran, and I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Dominic Island, who will, who will be giving a land acknowledgement. Dominique. Hi, everyone. Thank you much, so much for the introduction. Yes, my name is Dominique, and uh, I'm so glad to be a part of, of this, and I really appreciate the invitation. So I'm going to be using my sign language, uh, and uh, I will let you know what it means in English. Um, so don't worry, in the very beginning, there won't be an interpretation. Um, sorry, that part was just a little bit frozen. So she's going to be using her own Indigenous sign language with the land acknowledgement, which will not be interpreted into English, but she'll let us know afterwards what it means. So the first thing that I said was being thankful to the creator for things like Mother Earth, uh, the foods that we eat, the medicines that we use, uh, tobacco, sacred tobacco, the water we drink, the animals that we live amongst, the birds, our ancestors, the sun, the stars, the weather, the four directions, and thanking the creator for all of those things that we have and everything that we have that we value and protect here on the earth. I want to thank uh, Yasmin for the invitation to uh, have done the land acknowledgement, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dominic. We are very grateful for your, your time this morning. Thank you. All right. Um, and we'll crack on with the presentation and we'll do our best to keep everybody on time to respect your, your time and to allow uh, some uh, moments for, for questions and answers at the end. The first speaker is Lisa Ke Kelly of the Discoverability Network, a program of the Chamber of Commerce of Ontario. And I will um, pass the, the baton to, to, to Lisa and we are grateful for your, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is everyone able to hear me? I'm assuming because I see some interpretation, so that's good. So hello, uh, my name is Lisa Kelly and I'm a programs manager with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce and I work on a specific program called the Discoverability Network. And we're really here to help support business. So if you're, so if you're a female entrepreneur, 
we're delighted that you're you're joining us and we're hoping that you very much can you know benefit from some of the tools that we'll be talking about. For those of you that are not familiar with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, we've been in business for 110 years. They, we represent 157 local chambers of commerce and boards of trade. Now, a lot of people are surprised to find out we are a nonpartisan, not-for-profit business advocate. So we're here to support business with evidence-based solutions and tools. We like to call ourselves the indispensable partner of business. And we represent 60,000 businesses across the province. We are going to send out all these decks so that you can access these tools and you don't have to be busy making notes. So a couple of the things that um, we are involved in, you can check on the OCC website, OCC.ca, but I'm also gonna encourage you to visit the Discoverability Network website. We have our own website. So what do we do? We spend a lot of time on research and policy development, but we also offer events, webinars, resources, publications. These are for free. So I'm going to encourage you if you hear about something that you think is interesting to, you know, go have a look. So we do offer the Ontario Economic Series. These are done virtually during this time of COVID right now. We have the Ontario Business Achievement Awards. Um, you know, again, go visit. We, we look at diverse panel of individuals and businesses across Ontario. I think interestingly, we've added this year COVID-19 resources. So tools and resources to help businesses thrive. We have a lot of publications. Three that I wanted to mention are the She Covery, which really looks at, you know, how women have been disproportionately affected, you know, negatively by the um, by COVID. So we're, you know, you can go on there and learn more about that. There's a great piece called Capital is Key, Financing Entrepreneurship in Ontario. So again, after COVID-19. Uh, so I encourage you to um, go look at that. We have free webinars that you can go have a look at. And of course, we have programs, which is what I'm going to spend most of my time talking to you about today. So we have a Talent Opportunities Program. Through that, you can access up to $7,000 um, you know, by hiring a student. So it's a subsidy program if you're looking to bring someone on for an internship in the short term. Very, very useful. Shop Local. That program's over now, but I loved it because it was encouraging people to use local businesses and talk about that. So um, that's a great one. Uh, Import Export. We had our Canada United, which was, um, you know, a fund to help businesses um, during COVID. Um, you know, be able to transition. And finally, the Discoverability Network, which is the program that I work on and I want to talk to you specifically about today. So Discoverability has three main platforms. Number one, and really importantly, is our job matching platform. So if you are an owner who's looking to hire diverse talent, and I can tell you this is a great talent pool as a person with lived experience of disability myself, we make great employees. Um, so if you wanna hire somebody with a disability, you can advertise on our system for free to connect to qualified talent. So I very, very much hope that you, you know, you'll do that. If you are a person with a disability and wanna to connect to people, um, to employers who are looking to hire people with disabilities, you sign up for free. We also offer free training. You can reach out to me directly and we can provide you with customized training or you can attend one of our public sessions, which you can access through our social media and through our event break. Finally, we offer networking events and these are really exciting because they connect employment service providers, they connect um, individuals with a disability and inclusive businesses, a chance to meet people, uh, learn what, what they're doing to grow their businesses and to become more inclusive and profitable. So again, through Eventbrite or our social media. There is a competitive advantage and our businesses have told us that this. So our businesses actually asked for us to create this platform to connect them to this talent pool. So this is driven by business for business. 77% of the small businesses we talk to and also the Bank of Montreal talks to have said that people, hiring people with disabilities meets or exceeds expectations. There's a higher retention level and higher company loyalty. The cost is minimal. So we know that only 37% of people with a disability require an accommodation in the workplace. 
Of those, 60% of the accommodations cost nothing, and 93% of accommodations are a one-time cost of less than $600 Canadian. When you think of the cost of hiring somebody is, you know, roughly around $4,000, and if it doesn't work out, that's gone, that's a deal. Finally, we're here to help you with your eight human resources capacity issues. So if you have questions, if you want training, if you want to be connected to a local service provider, call us and we'll do some of that legwork for you. So visit us at discoverability.network. You sign up either, either as a job seeker or as business. Again, it's free. We also have a lot of resources on our website. So there's links to curated best tools. So for instance, I love the Canada Conference Board of Canada's Employers Toolkit. I think it's one of the best in terms of just templates. We uh, link to free online training, micro training um, with able to learn.ca. We have links to our own roadmap to hiring people with disabilities. So all of it free, please go on and visit, explore. That's it for me. I've taken six minutes and 38 seconds. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them right now. Again, we'll send out this deck. You can reach out to us or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. I'm going to stop my share and see if we have any questions. In the chat, there's a question. Sure. Can you read that for me, please? Is this just for Ontario? Asks uh, Heather Gormley. Heather, what a great question. And, and um, one that I we do on our system, you can sign up across Canada. So um, we would have, I think about, it's predominantly Ontario and it's funded for Ontario. But I do have employers all across Canada on it. And I do have job seekers all across Canada. So we don't market it but there is national capability. There's also the capability for people with other dimensions of diversity to self-identify. So we are a small job board, a mighty one I like to say, but we are small. We have about 1500 employers and we have about 2500 job seekers. So um, if you have another, so for instance, I self-identify as a female and my pronouns are she and her. So I also self-identify on our system as a female. But if you had additional ones, so for instance, if you self-identified as Indigenous or a newcomer or LGBTQ2SI+, you can also self-identify and our employers will sometimes look at those additional dimensions. So again, we do post nationally. We do have national employers, especially a lot of the enterprise level organizations. And you can self-identify across a number of different diversity dimensions, but we are predominantly how oh, do we make great. it okay and we have a question how how do we make it easy for employers to learn about these stats you can call me arena and i will publicize it we do about 300 pieces of training for free over the year i have trained personally over 4000 employers um or employees within um employer organizations. And I think we're over 800 employers that we've trained across the province. So we continue to do that. We're committed to this. So you can use my data, my statistics, my website, feel free. It's all there. Um, we also have a question of how do we make it? Um, oh, do you assist people starting nonprofits? Yes, we do. Happy to help with that. So again, feel free to quote download materials, we have infographics, connect to some of the resources out there and share them. Oh, and thank you very much for that. Um, somebody said I'm doing an awesome job sharing this information on LinkedIn. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody who's been part of our commitment. Now I see that we have Miss Natasha who has her hand up. Would you like to ask a question before I turn it over? Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good evening and good night, everyone. I'm Miss <laughs> Natasha, speaker, educator and all around authentically autistic woman i'd like to know you were speaking about um finding a student hiring a student i need a student i'm in need of a student who has high executive functioning skills to assist me with organization in my business that's something that i can attain i live in whippy ontario 
And you are doing a wonderful job, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Natasha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Elizabeth to put into the chat her number and let's connect after this session, Miss Natasha, and see if we can do a job posting for you and get it up on discoverability. We will help you with that. Um, we offer that for free. Is there any certain criteria to prove your person? No. So we select people who self-identify as having a disability. We do not require medical proof. Uh, personally, I, you know, as a person with a disability, I find that kind of, that's the medical model. We use the social model of disability. Um, any other questions? Great ones. Reach out to me. I'll put my name in the chat if you want. I'm always here to answer questions. So thank you very much. I would like to introduce Renee Jandron. And I've got to say this was Renee's idea. So this whole, so we have to give credit where credit is due. So she is the person that reached out to us initially to, for, with this idea, as well as, you know, our valued partners um, at CCRW and Dawn. Renee is the Eastern Ontario Coordinator for PARO. PARO is an organization that supports women entrepreneurs in Ontario. Welcome, Renee, and we're looking forward to hearing all about it. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the introduction. It was a lovely collaboration to work with everybody on this, this presentation. So it's, it's quite an honor to meet such interesting and, and um, empowered and caring women all around. Uh, PARO is the organization I work for. And um, PARO is Latin for I am ready. And we are headquartered in Thunder Bay. We are just about 30 years old. And our mandate is to support women entrepreneurs where they are. We strengthen small businesses through access of grants and funding. We deliver different kinds of programs for educational programs, for biz camps. And biz camps can be eight to 12 weeks of coaching and support for different cohorts to help women where they are. We offer free educational programming, webinars, and um, Pero Go Forth. It's basically a college level course that you can access 24 seven and you have a year to complete it. And if you don't finish it in a year, that's okay, we can extend it. But the idea is that you learn when you want to, when you have time and anywhere you want, on the beach or at the cottage or in five minute breaks between, between your work. We also offer mentoring opportunities and these are conversations to have with people in your field or conversations with people that have had the same lived experience, then you would like to know how they navigated it. And we also have free one-on-one -on -one business support for entrepreneurs. Our educational programs are available mostly in English with some in French, but our coaching, one-on-one -on -one business coaching is available in French, English, Arabic, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, Russian, Dutch, and Afrikaans. So we, we do have a linguistic range there. And we also work to improve a positive impact of our clients on their communities. We have different approaches to doing this and we're pan-Ontario. We are, we are everywhere in Ontario where you can think of. And this is just a little map to give you an idea of how we divide our, our territories. Anything from Windsor to Niagara to, if you can see it all the way up here in Fort Severn, all the way up there, and by James Bay and up to Manitoba, we're there in support of women entrepreneurs. We have goals in which, you know, we help you understand that if you want to be an entrepreneur, we have to provide supports. We help you connect and develop networks, networks with other women entrepreneurs, networks with broader industries, export, import. And we also help you develop networks with different levels of government to be able to deliver your services. And we're there to realize that women need different kinds of resources at different times in their entrepreneurship journey. And we are here to create that space and support women where they're at. Okay. And we'll just crack on here. All right. We, if you are in Northwestern Ontario, and it is a very specific pro, like, geographic area, but if you are in Thunder Bay to Kenora, so Northwestern Ontario, we have a Breaking Barriers, Building Bridges programs. And the program provides grants for businesses of um, women who self-identify as having a disability and being on ODSB. We have a specific coordinator for that program and I'll, I'll pass out that information at the end. And you're welcome to 
communicate with her to see how we can offer specific supports in that geographic area. We help um, business, businesses thrive through different activities, through different ways. We help you build your business plan. We help you with business counseling and coaching, workshops and individual counseling, funding opportunities, networking, and information to grow your business in terms of um, we, we partner with embassies sometimes and trade commissioners to introduce you to export opportunities. We do trade missions prior to the pandemic. And during the pandemic, we did virtual trade missions. We also connect you with um, supply chains municipal, university, schools, and hospitals, the mush sectors. And we also in Northern Ontario have deep contacts with mines and mining and forestry in order to help you get into that supply chain. But we also offer supports for Indigenous women where we have a specific program that is led by an Indigenous elder to be able to support Indigenous women develop their businesses encased in, in, you know, and, and supported with other Indigenous women. We have supports for programs for businesses that are $50,000 in revenue, and we coach them to $150,000 in revenue. And then we have another program to help women-owned businesses that have $250,000 in revenue, all the way up to $1 million. We are here for the entire entrepreneurship journey. I'll just go back. Right. So strengthen your businesses. This is procurement, business planning, leadership, professional development, all that fun stuff. We have weekly webinars in French and in English, and they are webinar Wednesdays. Everybody is free to participate. If you are outside of Ontario, you are encouraged to participate. There is always a networking session afterwards, and you get to meet and connect with other women entrepreneurs. We are one of North America's largest peer lenders. And we recognize women face many barriers to financing and to getting resources to really take off. And we designed peer lending circles. And they are based on these principles, peer support, cooperation, ownership, responsibility, simplification, and community. It's very, very difficult to start a business alone. And we recognize the importance of having a community around your business to help you thrive. And I'll, I'll go over this quickly. All slides will be shared afterwards, okay? But how does this work? Four to seven business women decide to form a circle. They might be in the same sector. They might work in the same geographic area. They might be from all parts of Ontario to mix it up a bit, but it's four to seven women who get along well and who agree that they want to form a circle. They then um, get together at least once a month. They talk about their business issues. They help each other out. They network, they share resources. And then they, if they need funding, they then present a plan to their, their circle. This is what I'll use the funding for. They talk about it. And then if it gets approved by the circle, they become eligible for stage one funding. And stage one funding is $500 grant. NP, NRP is non-repayable portion grant. Okay, And a $500 loan. And they repay that over nine months at $60 a month. If she needs more money, she goes back to her group and she goes, all right, here's my plan for stage two. And stage two ensures that she's eligible for $1,000 grant and $1,000 loan. She repays the $1,000 loan over nine months at $120 a month. Third stage funding is up to $3,000 loan and stage four funding is up to $5,000 loan. This is called character-based loans and not based on credit rating. And the idea is that we go to a bank and we have partners banks throughout Ontario and they don't look at the credit score. They look at the support the woman has for the loan and the, the interest rates are no more than 10%. If you have poor credit or no credit, this will help you um, reestablish your, your credit rating for that. And it'll help you understand cash flow and it will help you thrive with your business. Okay. 
So um, that was that. So this is me, my contact information. It'll be available at the end as well. And we are everywhere and we're very, very happy to connect with you. You can reach us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. We also have a Twitter account. And I'd just like to be very grateful um, to our funders for their support in ensuring that Paro services can continue. Our services are free, are fully funded. The loan is something you, you repay. Um, but everything else, the education, the coaching, the counseling, the mentor moments, all of that is fully funded by the province and by the federal government. I think I'm okay for time. And I don't know if anybody here has any immediate questions they would like answered. I'll take a quick note on my timekeeper, Elizabeth. Um, I think we're okay for time, is that right? I'll just, um, I'll, I'll just answer quickly. If I think we're okay. Uh, what about the OST, the non-OST, uh, some people, okay. So our services are available throughout Ontario for all women, regardless of EI, o ODSP, working full-time, retired. Um, and um, if you have specific programs about the Breaking Bar Barriers program in Northwestern Ontario, I'm happy to connect you with the coordinator to go over the details of that program. I would like, I would want to, to misspeak. Um, is there a contact for female and Indigenous entrepreneurs? Just reach out to me and I'll, I'll um, help you with that paperwork. Are there other types of grants available uh, for people that are not from Ontario? Absolutely. The federal government in each province or territory also has a lot of business grants. Just reach out to me and I'll, I'll, happy, I'll be happy to navigate that with you. Um, are, are we able to access are we able to access funding if we don't have other female support? Uh, yes, there are different kinds of funding. We can help you create a peer circle, help you, you introduce you to other women that you might click with and work well with for other um, circles. And there's also a bunch of grants and funding out there not based on the peer circles that we can help you access. Uh, thank you for the questions. All right, I didn't catch your email. The emails will be available at the end and you can tag that and you will also distribute the PowerPoints so you can see the information. And then this is from Sarah. So the program for character loans for people outside the, the loans, the peer lending circles are across Ontario. Our counseling, our mentoring, um, our education webinars, our Paro Go Forth, that's available for all women in Ontario. Um, but there's just something specifically for women with disabilities that's in Northwestern Ontario. And the, the specific catchment area would be from Thunder Bay to Kenora. But everything else that I've spoken about, the loans, the counseling, the mentoring, that's available throughout Ontario. Okay, so excellent. Irena, great that you were able to pick up on the energy on this call. Fantastic that we have all of this interest in, in these conversations. I'm very grateful. Uh, doing a very quick look to see of the participants if they have a live question. And I'm not sure if Miss Natasha has her question answered from the previous presentation or if she has a new question. Okay, all right. Well, um, with that, I'll close my screen share. I've got a lot of windows open, pardon me if I'm a little bit scattered. And I would love to um, present, I'm just gonna go back and find it, Tara. Tara Steves, um, you'll have to forgive me, it was in the chat, your beautiful introduction. Um, and Tara Steves is with the Canadian Council of Rehabilitation and Work. And um, I'm just, sorry. Uh, and she has been a partner with us since the beginning of this, this presentation. The, she is the supervisor of the YTF National on the Council of Canadian Council of Rehabilitation and Work. The Canadian Council of Rehabilitation and Work exists to promote and support meaningful and equitable employment of people with disabilities. As innovators and agents of change, we build partnerships, develop skills, share knowledge, and influence attitudes. Also, the CCRW strives to be a preeminent Canadian center of excellence 
and economic and social and psychological aspects of disability, be it one of physical, sensory, medical, learning, or mental health disability, as they impact every people's ability to seek and acquire productive employment. Tara, thank you so much for joining us today, and I pass you the, the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. So good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, if you are on the East Coast of Canada. My name is Tara, as Renee so eloquently stated. I am one of the national directors of a program called Youth the Future, which I'll touch base on here um, in a minute. But I oversee programs in British Columbia, Iqaluit, Nunavut, Montreal, and St. John's, Newfoundland, where my counterparts, my partners do mostly all of the other provinces. Those are more my four specific provinces. So today I'm gonna to give you just a brief overview of CCRW and what we can offer you from the employer, but also for individuals looking for employment. But it is my privilege to be with you here today with these other organizations because we're all in this for the same goal just to help people. Um, we offer some similar programming. And you know what? We, we don't, um, we're not in competition with each other. We're here for you. And that's us having this presentation today. So CCRW stands for the Canadian Council on Rehabilitation and Work. So we're a national not-for-profit organization that offers a wide range of service and programs that aim to bring together qualified candidates with disabilities and inclusive employers. So we offer, uh, we have three main purposes. So to support job seekers across Canada with all types of disability, to support employers who wish to hire employees with, uh, who are persons with disabilities, and to share our resources, experiences, and skills in order to make employment opportunities accessible for every candidate. My presentation today is in French and English. I will only be presenting in English, but this slide deck will be uh, presented for you. If you are a Francophone, um, it is available for you as well, and we will have the French slides. So we also um, highly value people with disabilities and acknowledge that they have the right to equal treatment and access to employment. So whether you're currently working or you're lurking for, looking for your next great opportunity, CCRW has the program to help. So we, you will see within my presentation the French slides. I will skip over those, but they're for you if you are a Francophone. So CCRW at a glance, we're national, we specialize with disability. We offer accommodation, support, um, and funding. We're accessible, whether it be in person when COVID allows or virtual. Um, we work with employability skills. We're not for profit and we are here for you. So we have different programs within CCRW. One would be our business development um, part of our company. So the business development team works remotely all across the country and interacts with all aspects of CCRW. So where there is engagement and innovation at our company, it's designed and disability confident processes are integrated. So we work with top employers to help position businesses to adapt, grow, and become more competitive. And our success strategies position organizations to become the golden standard in inclusion and in implementing the Accessible Canada Act. So we also have a program called AIM. So AIM is the Accommodation and Inclusion Management which focuses on improving workplaces, accommodations, and adjustment processes for Canadian businesses. So basically, in a nutshell, we work with businesses to make sure that accommodations and inclusion are paramount within their organization. We will help with them with assessments on how to make sure that those with disabilities are being able to be their best self in the job. We also have a program called Pivot. So that is where business talent management, and it is new, it's a new service for job seekers looking to enter or re-enter the workforce. So the support starts with the development of an employment and skills profile, a guide service delivery included 
um, support with resumes, interviews, coaching, and network. So this is the support between businesses acquiring their talent acquisition and the individual looking for employment as well. We have the Partners Program. So the Partners Program has three different sub-programs, which I'm not going to get in today. I'm just going to kind of give you an overview. So it's all programs um, that support job seekers with disabilities and small businesses making meaningful job matches. There's no age limit to this program. So whether you are 15 um, and just starting out in a career or you're 82 and you're wanting to be in a career <clears throat> or have a job, we have qualified job developers across the country that will work with individuals to help train, support, encourage, match you up with different funding resources to be able to get maybe some of those resources that you need to start the job. Um, and we will assist people across the board. So Partners is national, and I encourage you to um, look into it a little bit more deeper through our website, which you will get information about that on the end. Youth the Future, which is one of the programs, the program that I um, partially oversee. So that is for youth ages 15 to 30 or young adults. And we provide comprehensive pre-employment training to groups of young job seekers in supports of all aspects in their transition to pay to in their transition to paid work in their communities. So we um, offer an, a two-month training, intensive training for youth with disabilities, train them on everything that it means about a job. Um, it might be that we're paying for accommodations, that we're paying for assessments um, to be done, whether it's neuro, neurological, psychological assessments or workplace assessments. Um, we have funding to be able to pay for all of those things to be able to make sure that our clients and our participants are served to the best of their ability when they're going into employment. Youth the Future is across the country. So um, we do have four sites currently in Ontario. We have sites in um, British Columbia, Winnipeg, Iqaluit, none of it, Montreal, um, Moncton, New Brunswick, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Charlottetown, PEI, and St. John's, Newfoundland, but we're also virtual. So if you don't live in those particular cities and you know of somebody or if you are somebody within that category that self-identifies as having a disability, because like the other presenters today that have mentioned the social model of disability, we also take that, um, that stance. So it is a self-declaration -de of disability and we recognize everything from mental health to um, you name it, I think. Right now, I think I have about 72 different types of disability and where we have served and helped individuals. So we are, as I mentioned, all across the country um, and also virtual. One exciting thing to end my short presentation is that we're also launching and spe specifically working with women in, uh, we have a women only site in, Montreal, and we are launching five new sites across the country for women specific when it comes to disability and engagement into the workforce. So I do suggest that if you want to know more information to email info at ccrw.org, ask any question that you would want. I will stay on this call after our presentations are done to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but we certainly want to be able to answer any question and to be able to help as best as we can. So with that, I'm not going to take questions right now. I will take questions at the end. Um, but for right now, I'd like to introduce Yasmin uh, Tunser, the Youth Initiatives Coordinator for Dawn, and who is one of our partners in uh, Montreal with one of our sites in Montreal. So Dawn is an organization that works towards the advancement and inclusion of women and girls with disabilities and deaf women in Canada. 
their overreaching or their overarching strategic theme is one of leadership, partnership, and networking to engage all levels of government and the wider disability and women's sectors and other stakeholders to tackle key issues. So welcome, Yasmin. We look forward to hearing from you. And again, the deck for the stuff that I presented will be available to you. And I will be here for questions after um, our, pres our main presentation is done. Hi, Tara. Thank you very much for that introduction. It was amazing. And um, I'm really happy and excited to be here and to be part of this, um, uh, this great webinar. And thank you, Renee, for coming up with this idea. And um, to begin with, I'm Yasmin. My pronouns are she, her, but if you're not sure, please uh, go with they, uh, better than to misgender someone, I think. And um, I am an immigrant woman, neuroqueer woman living in Montreal, um, unceded Kanan-Tiatik territory. And I work at Dawn, a disabled women's network, and um, I'm the youth initiatives uh, coordinator over, over here. I also have the slides in French, but I've sent them uh, over to our um, uh, logistical magicians and they can be shared afterwards if you need to have a look at them. So about Dawn, you will see that we, uh, we are a bit different um, uh, considering uh, when compared to the other groups here uh, presenting today. Um, let me just go on to my next slide. So what is our mission? Our mission is to end the poverty, isolation, discrimination, and violence experienced by women with disabilities and deaf women. When I say women, I'm talking about anyone identifying as women or gender diverse people. And, um, and when I say uh, in a situation of disability, of course, I mean uh, self-identifying, uh, uh, self-diagnosed. Um, uh, without any um, uh, medical, we do not seek medical uh, diagnosis for this. And um, uh, how do, uh, what is our approach? What is our approach? Firstly, we do research. Uh, we collaborate with researchers, academics, other organizations, uh, and uh, anyone who's interested. And we do some research to make sure that the realities of women in situations of disabilities are um, known, are put forward. <clears throat> we also do education. How do we do that? We work with teachers, professors, anyone in power, uh, employers, um, policy makers. We work with them. We try to educate them. We try to update them on the latest uh, numbers about, uh, a num uh, about these women. And we try to make their situation known. We also um, do uh, work in policy making. Um, here, our goal is to make sure that the situation of women in disabilities, in a situation of disability, are not left uh, as an afterthought. We want them to be uh, central to any policies that are being taken currently. And we do advocacy. Um, how do we do that? Um, in the past, uh, uh, Bonnie, our national executive director, has taken part uh, in order to um, emphasize uh, certain legal situations and uh, Thanks to um, the advocacy that Dawn has, uh, has shown, has done, uh, there have been some fundamental changes in the legal system. I uh, strongly suggest that you check out our, our website to, um, um, to have a deeper look at it. And I said we do research, so I would like to give some examples about those. Um, for example, Women in situation of disability in Canada, their percentage is 53%. So that is a very high number. And um, the unemployment, unemployment rate among these women is 75%. And uh, of these women with disabilities, 58% um, live less than uh, 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 $10,000 per year. So we all know that in order to be able to get out of a, a difficult situation, to get um, to gain independence, we need money, we need jobs, we need employment. So and we also know that COVID the pandemic has uh, actually um, 
make the situation for these women even worse. So what do we do? Um, so our role in all of this, well, we do not work directly with participants. We do not work directly with, we do not offer any programs or services to any uh, to the women in situations of uh, disabilities. But what do we do? We try to make sure that these women are at the center of any, uh, any work that is being done. How do we do this? We use a lens of intersectionality. At the very beginning, I said, I'm an immigrant woman and you're a queer woman. So all of these, they come together. Uh, we all know that um, as women uh, compared to men, we are at uh, a greater disadvantage, especially when it comes to employment. Uh, if you add to that disability, you, you get even further oppressed. If you are a person of uh, color, you get even more, um, you experience even more oppression. So we try to take these into consideration in any work that we do. And from all of this work, we, do, we try to focus on, well, we focus on accessibility and inclusivity to make sure that everyone has, gets a chance at, uh, at work, at uh, services, at any uh, opportunities that might arise. Now, um, I'd like to give an example. Um, so we said that uh, we work, but we don't work directly with uh, participants. So how do we do it? So um, we, for example, um, as Tara has mentioned, we collaborated with CCRW uh, here in Montreal for the Young the Future um, program. Normally, the Young the Future program uh, around Canada is uh, uh, mixed gender, but um, thanks to our collaboration with them, um, it was possible to set up a, um, a, a, an office here in Montreal, uh, um, especially focusing on women with disabilities. This helped us to see what the differences are, what their needs are, and what kind of uh, communication they need. And as Tara just said, I, I believe thanks to what we've learned uh, from this program, um, there are now five other uh, offices that, well, the programs that will be set up around Canada, which is a, a great achievement, I believe. I also want to give a little example. So how do we collaborate with them? Um, we do workshops, we offer any support that they might need. And um, from one of the workshops that I've done, um, uh, it was, uh, in, sorry, intersectionality and um, self-advocacy. So how does this help? This helps these participants to get themselves to better and to express themselves better. And I'd like to give a specific example uh, because I really do believe that this really makes, um, uh, uh, this really shows how these programs are helpful. Um, I was doing a mock interview with the participants at the YTF um, uh, um, office in Montreal. And there was this one participant uh, on the spectrum um, uh, um, of uh, autism. And um, as part of the mock interview question, I had to ask her what her weaknesses and strengths were. This is a question I hate, I've always hated this question. And I had to ask her and I was really happy and proud of her answer. She said that uh, for her weakness, she's not very good with social cues and she would really appreciate getting direct feedback, criticism, anything, but she um, hearing directly what is expected of her makes her work, makes her job much better and easier. And as for her strength, she said she's very good with numbers and remembering client orders. And I cannot think of a better way of um, explaining autism uh, for someone who doesn't know what it's like and putting them out there in the, in the best light possible. So I, I just wanted to share this because I really think this makes it uh, very obvious for anyone to see how these uh, programs work. So uh, Dawn does these workshops. We do these workshops and events with organizations uh, and we do them with other program participants via these other organizations. So if you're an employer and uh, or uh, are working for an, another organization, um, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, and we can set up a workshop with you. And next one. 
And Dawn is also a hub, we're also a network. Um, soon we'll be setting up a, a resource list around Canada uh, for any, uh, any support, any organization that anyone might be looking for. So please stay tuned for that as well. And finally, what other work do we do? I've already spoken about activism. We do research. Please do check out our research. Right now, I am part of the Girls Without Barriers project, uh, which is a Canada, uh, um, around Canada project where we'll be talking to young girls and women, uh, trying to understand what their needs and realities are. Of course, there will be an intersectional lens. And uh, we do capacity building. For example, we work with other uh, organizations, DJ, I know an organization in, sorry, in Ontario. And they're an up and coming, very strong um, organization, but they, they're just, they're also very young. So we're there to help them out, understand what the admins are, what admin needs are, logistics are, et cetera. And we also do international work. We collaborate with other, uh, researchers, projects, etc., internationally, and we try to make um, make what well, we try to do the work for uh, women with um, disabilities. So, if you would like to get in touch with me, uh, here's my uh, email address. If you would like to know more about Dawn Canada, please go ahead. And um, I, as we said, all this will be circulated once we're done. Do we have time for questions or? Uh, yes, we Mary. yes, I'm going to intervene here if you don't sure. mind. And I'm going to say um, thank you everybody for the participation. I'm putting an evaluation into the chat. And I noticed that Kelly had a, a question about is does Dawn have a newsletter in the survey in the evaluation you have the option of signing up for each organization's newsletter so it, it, that just answers kelly's question right there that's why i'm intervening um this is going to transition to the q a period but before i do that i would like to acknowledge and thank the ontario chambers of commerce for their additional support in, in the technical aspects of making this presentation going um, i can't talk anymore i apologize for coordinating this presentation and ensuring that there are asl interpreters and ensuring the back end in terms of zoom and inventbrite and other support for that. So thank you very much, Lisa and Elizabeth, for your valiant efforts in this. Yes, very much a round of applause. And thank you so much to Yasmin and Tara for your ongoing support throughout all of this. This presentation is extremely grateful. Uh, before we get to the q and I believe Lisa had a couple of closing remarks. Uh, yeah, so um, thank you everybody for um, joining us. We're going to encourage you to reach out um, to any of us um, in our organizations. Again, we'll send you a follow-up email using the information that you signed up. Really want to thank all my uh, you know, peers. That's been, it's been amazing um, to have you all be here. Um, and let's take a few questions if we can right now. I love all the engagement we've had so far, Renee and Tara and Yasmin. I mean, it's been quite, quite wonderful. Is there an employment focus group for women over 55 with disability that is also available in BC? Does anyone want to tackle that? I have been working with Work BC, which is a great group, open door group, but as an older woman, I'm facing more barriers than ever. Whom should I speak with or contact? BCRW does have a partners program in Surrey, British Columbia, um, where there's no um, limit to age um, or, I mean, they work with, with all individuals, uh, d doesn't matter of their, how they identify, um, but that is something certainly that um, Sandra, I don't know if they have a focus group, but they certainly have a good pulse on what is happening in British Columbia. I'm not sure where you're located, um, but we certainly do have programs in BC, specifically in Surrey right now, but we are virtual as well to be able to offer support and assistance for individuals looking for employment. I would also say, please create an account because we do have um, businesses 
that advertise nationally. So like CBC Radio Canada, a lot of the financial institutions. So please um, create an account. I'd also encourage you to use the LinkedIn feature. It's my second favorite job board next to ours. I think it's amazing and it's a phenomenal way to, I think Renee, we met over it. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it's a great way to reach out to people, learn what's going on and network your way into a job. There is a new job board called Jobs Ability that is coming online that I believe is national. So I'd get on that too. But just as a former employment counselor, my um, you're going to probably network your way into a job through one of these programs, through reaching out to us. Um, you know, link us all in on face our LinkedIn guys. If you have that, we're I'm happy to accept invitation. Learn what's going on. Uh, a lot of jobs are virtual right now, so that can be a really good option. I don't know what your skill sets are, so it's really difficult to give any uh, feedback to help, you know, um, to, to help you with that right now. Okay, uh, but happy to, if you reach out to Elizabeth, we'll see what we can do in terms of um, possibly connecting you to some of our partners in BC. Okay, how do we accommodate people who need to work outside the home during times when restrictions are being applied? People with or without a disability benefit from structure and routine. The pandemic has been a major contributor to the great resignation. Um, okay, so again, I'm gonna clarify. So I've got this question. Our jobs are national. We have predominantly Ontario jobs, but we also post national positions, okay? So, and I have national employers. So it's an outside chance because most of our jobs are Ontario specific, but please create a profile. Okay. Um, you know, for people who have um, restrictions on how you can work, it narrows your job search. Tara, you probably have a back, you have a background like me uh, in this field. It narrows your job search. So be aware of that. So it means you have to work extra hard on the networking piece, on getting yourself out there, getting known. I've got to say, this is a, a call out to one of the people that's uh, Arena, who's on every one of these calls. And if I get a job that matches her skill set, because she comes on, she asks great questions, she's prepared, she will be probably the first person I recommend for a position when, when I see one coming open. That's how we do it, guys. We build community. We learn about each other. And, you know, that's how you get jobs. I actually hired two people through websites like, the, you know, through webinars like this. It's building community, okay? So you need to do that. Unfortunately, there's restrictions on everything right now. Um, but again, I think that you have to then network your way into somewhere where it is open. A lot of frontline services are. Uh, a lot of people in the social service work field so you just kind of need to spend some time ccrw is amazing with this providing advice for individuals on a one-to-one -one basis we will be holding a creative arts community um, webinar coming up sandra so um, connect with elizabeth follow us on social media this is where you're going to learn we're actually looking to recruit a hundred people over for for some big agencies that are going to be putting on a networking event so please sign up sign up to our newsletters sign up to different people you know um we've had employers hire people from nova scotia i see that just coming up there leads is an amazing organization so again connect to your employment service providers that are near you it can be a great tool i'm going to turn off the recording now thank you so much for joining so that if people have questions we can stay on but we can deal with those as they um, come up all right so thank you all and we'll look forward to taking your questions offline